Some breaking SEO news out of Amazon Seller Central. They've moved the character count on the search term field from 250 bytes to 500 characters. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I will break down what this could mean for your Amazon brand. So if you go into the edit page of pretty much any listing right now and go to the generic keyword section, they've rebranded this a few times. They've called it search terms, generic keyword, and a few other variations. Well, if you just type out whatever, some googly gawk here and try and max out the character count, you'll notice it's changed. It's now 500 characters. It previously was 250 bytes. 250 bytes is somewhere around 275 characters, just to give you some uh, understanding. Bytes didn't count spaces. It was pretty confusing. It's probably why they're changing it. They're also doubling it in essence. Uh, so now you've got over 500 characters to work with here. Uh, still a single field. This used to be multiple fields in the past. They've done all kinds of things over the years. It used to be like a thousand characters. Then it went down to 250. Now it's at 500. So Amazon does keep playing with this from time to time. And the more sophisticated sellers out there are paying attention and taking advantage of this. And that's how you're going to get your best SEO gains. Now, I have items in various categories. And the first thing that I wanted to know was, would this affect everybody? And so far, every subcategory we've checked from supplements to uh, tumblers and everything in between, it's been there. It's been available. So this does appear to be a wide sweeping change available to pretty much every category. I'm sure you'll find some exceptions as they roll it out. Uh, but this is brand new. This didn't exist previously. We didn't see this in there yesterday. So it's really brand spanking new here. So in here, uh, what you could do is take advantage of the character count field by adding additional keywords, right? So I have in this field, Ashwana gummies, bottle, women, vitamin, supplement, men, female, extra strength, and all kinds of things that are in here. There are going to be things that are going to be better than others. So if we went over to amazon.com and we typed in Ash. Wanda gummies and let's say we we're going to try and recreate this we do this we do this in several phases of SEO and this is like getting started with the master keyword list so you go find 10 top competitors and you're going to have to do this again if you've done it before because a the data changes and b there's now twice as much room to work with so you're going to need that extra space so I'm going to click my little Helium 10 button, load in the keywords, and take a look at the number one SEO organic ranked for a term of my choosing. So for me, it's Ashwana Gummies. For you, it could be anything. And you're going to find 10 competitors. You'll put them all into Cerebral like this, and you're going to be able to get thousands of organic keywords that are going to come up. You'll eventually want to export this data into an Excel file. In the Excel file, you're going to want to sort it by the number of competitors. And you're, you're gonna notice once you add in um, multiple ASINs here and then you go over to this competing products filter, you can then um, see how many items are in that rank. So if we go back to this and grab, let's grab a second one in here. We're gonna grab a second ASIN and put that into Cerebro here. Uh, and we're gonna load from history because it's the same data. and. <clears throat> In here, you're going to get that filter to see, okay, what's the average rank between all of these different products, right? So the average position rank and where all of these products stack up against each other. So you'll notice that some of these filters change once we add the second product in there. So for example, on the relative rank, if two competitors are ranked better than the main ASIN, the relative rank would be three. And so you'll see some additional filters that show up. So when you export that in, you can then get a gander on how many of the competitor ranks and the relative ranks will factor in. Once you've done that, you can then sort the data and then create what's called a relevancy score. And so essentially, now that you've got twice as much room to work with, twice as much relevancy to consult, you'll take twice as much space on that master keyword list. You'll come back to the generic keyword section and place it in there. And after that, you're going to rotate your keywords. And we like to run multiple phases of SEO. So after we've done the master keyword list, we then try and index for as many keywords in phase one and two. Uh, when we get to phase SEO three, we're looking at the strike zone keywords. So these are keywords that are in rank 20 through 50. So if we go into our filter here, 
and look for rank 20 through 50 and hit apply. You would then do that on your own ASIN and then it'd come back with X number of keywords. So 225 keywords are in the strike zone. That means they're in a position to organically generate a bunch of traffic, but they're really at the bottom of page one. Not a whole lot of people are clicking them. So a little bit of effort showing them in the search term, showing them in the title, the bullets, the description, as well as the A-plus content. So even all of the product description, all that good stuff. So let's go to one of my listings since that one's not optimized in the wild. So this title here, you're going to put keywords in there. You're going to put keywords in the bullets. You're going to put keywords in the alt text. I'm going to use a little alt text Chrome image alt text viewer on the Chrome store here. And in here, you can put keywords in like that. You can put alt text in the A-plus content. Each photo can have alt text. So you'll notice there's multiple alt texts and photos here. Each one of these photos in the product grid can also have alt text and have benefits. You'll notice that sometimes the red error will show up like where image alt text needs to be input. There's no image there, so that one's kind of a misnomer. Uh, but you'll fill all that in, and then you'll also fill in the gener generic keywords on the back. So that would that's how you rotate your keyword strategies and go through that. Finally, SEO phase four. This is when you're going to use the search query performance report. I like to call it the ICAP funnel, uh, and I have a bunch of information over at myamazonguy.com slash ICAP because it's impressions, clicks, add to carts, purchases, and we have a few use case studies and we go through like how to do this. And basically you're looking at reports like this, figuring out where you have a change between impressions, clicks, add to carts, and purchases. So you might have uh, a tornado, you might have a pyramid, you might have a black widow, um, hourglass, and whatever your shape of your funnel, you then can figure out, okay, well, if I'm really weak on clicks, I need to update my main image and really focus on CTR. So these are all things, and we do that in SEO phase four to go gain market share. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff to go through, and I give you kind of like a high-level view of this. For my full master guide, you're going to want to click on this video next. I give 70-minute master tutorial where I break this down in a greater detail. You can also go to myamazonguy.com slash SEO and learn everything we've ever done on SEO in one place. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy, and you can always hire us at myamazonguy.com to help boost your own rankings on Amazon.